Good afternoon, everybody. It's March 19th, uh, Thursday, and uh, wanted to make a quick video. Um, might be a little bit longer than the previous couple, um, but to address a couple things and to do a kind of almost like a, like a mini lesson or a review um, and read a book. Um, I'm looking at the book here. I'm going to do this one in just a minute. Um, but to kind of review some of the things that I've been working on with students throughout the year in, in lessons and in small groups, but um, decided to... Uh, trim up a little bit for two reasons. Um, one, uh, CDC and uh, the World Health Organization say, should there be a need to wear a mask, mustache is the way to go. So I decided to do that. And two, uh, my wife says, uh, I look at least 10 to 20% happier with a mustache. Um, I just think I look goofy with them, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to roll with it. So um, what I'm going to do today is read this with you guys and then go through a couple activities. It's a book that I got a couple weeks ago, actually three weeks ago. It's called Listening to My Body by Gabby Garcia. And we have been um, in February's lessons and even into January's lessons, I've been working with students on thinking about ways to regulate our bodies um, and how that has a pretty big impact on how we feel um, and our feelings and emotions. And so um, I was pretty excited to get this book a couple weeks ago and it actually has a couple activities that we had already been doing in the classroom with students. And so I'm going to get into this because I think right now is a good time um, to focus on our bodies uh, as they help us regulate how we feel. Um, kind of some bottom up processing when we think about paying attention to the sensations that are going on in our body. They usually correlate um, with how we feel in our brains and then we associate those with feelings. Uh, for example, like, a, and we'll talk about this in the book, but when I feel nervous, I might feel like a knot in my stomach. And if I can work towards untying that knot a little bit, maybe by doing some breathing or um, going outside for a little while, that's going to that's gonna help that knot untie a little bit. And I think I'm going to end up feeling, up, feeling a little bit better, a little less anxious. So I'm going to read this story with you guys um, and then get out of school and get home and go get some dinner. So again, Listening to My Body by Gabby Garcia. I'll kind of do a couple of these activities as we go. Maybe not all of them, but a couple of them. All right. My body is my friend. It tells me a lot of things. I yawn when I'm tired. My stomach growls to let me know I'm hungry. And sometimes I get goosebumps when I'm cold. This happens on its own, without me doing anything. I might not even notice it's happening, but I can start paying attention to my body. And so can you. So it says, let's practice. Look closely at the palm of your hand. Trace the lines of your palm softly with, the fi with your finger. And when you finish, switch hands. Think about how that felt. So we actually did this activity in February in a lot of classes with lessons and I gave the example of talking about um, when I come into classes my heart rate ends up going up and I ask students why that might be and it's usually because I'm pretty excited to come into a class so my heart rate might be I have a, a watch that'll tell me my heart rate and even right now it's a little up because I'm not used to doing videos like this so my heart rate's right around 80, 80, 85 somewhere around there and doing this activity where we're breathing and kind of tracing the, the creases or the lines on our hands, if we can do that quietly for, for maybe 30 seconds on each hand, um, I noticed when we did this in classes that I was always able to bring my heart rate down, especially when I was focused on my breathing as well. So um, if you have a moment, you could pause the video and just, and just try that out and just trace some lines in your hand, either do it smooth and continue to go and follow lines, or you can just make patterns and you can kind of squeeze them, do different things that might help you regulate how your hands feel and, and focus on your breathing as well. <clears throat> when I pay attention and listen to my body, I notice a lot of different sensations. Sensations are the physical feelings we all have inside and outside our bodies. Cold, sweaty, strong, and breathless are examples of sensations. Think if you've ever felt those sensations before. We can practice and do another activity really quick. Rub your hands quickly together for 30 seconds. Try to think about what you notice. Do you notice heat, tingles, sweat? Do you notice anything else? If you do, those are sensations. So just really lightly, you could do something like this. And I've done this activity multiple times with a lot of students before. And after we rub it together, we just kind of hold like this and just pay attention to what we notice going on in between our hands. We might feel something, we might feel nothing at all. Um, but chances are, if you're doing it for a little while, you might feel something. And so just noticing that, just noticing sensations. The sensations in my body are always changing. 
There's times when my body is so wiggly and squirmy, it's like I have ants in my pants. And there's other times when my body is calm and still. Sometimes the beat of my heart is like a gentle tap. Sometimes it feels like a pounding drum. You can practice this too and just notice. With students, I've done this before where we, we try to maybe pick up our heartbeat here. Can't feel it here, we might look here. You can feel mine right there, usually the strongest. You might feel it on your wrist as well. Try to notice your heartbeat. And if you want to experiment with that, try and take some maybe five to 10 deep breaths and see if you can notice if you can make and have, your, have an effect on your heart rate with, to see if it can slow down. I can also listen to my body for clues about how I'm feeling, about things that are happening around me. Feelings aren't good or bad. They're just something that we experience. Curious, proud, grumpy, scared. They're all a few feelings that we have. Think of some other feelings that you can name. If I was in a lesson, I'd ask you to brainstorm and think of other feelings. Maybe you've got a feeling that you're feeling right now. What I've learned from listening to my body is that sensations and feelings go together. I noticed then when I got to ride a roller coaster for the first time. I was super excited that I was finally tall enough to ride it, but I also felt nervous as I climbed on board. My belly felt squishy and fluttery. My mom calls that having butterflies in your stomach, but I thought it felt more like a kitty chasing ping pong balls. What sensations do you notice when you are excited or nervous? I'll move a little bit quickly through the rest of this book because I'm getting to be at six minutes right now. When I got off the roller coaster, I was buzzing and tingly all over. My eyes felt like uh, felt like they were saucers and I had a smile plastered all over my face. I felt awesome. This asks you to place your hand on your belly. Try to notice when you're breathing in, you're going out. And then when you breathe out, noticing your belly going back in. It says take 10 deep breaths. Try to notice your belly and notice and say, say the sensations that it feels. Sometimes when I'm sad, I get a lump in my throat and it makes it hard to talk or breathe. Warm tears might roll down my face and I might start to even cry harder. Crying makes me feel better usually, so do hugs. We all feel sad at times. What do you need when you feel sad? We can practice by wrapping our arms around ourselves and giving, our, giving ourselves a gentle hug. You can move your hands up and down your arms. You can squeeze a little bit tighter or you can loosen it up and try to figure out what feels good to you. If you're at home, you might have someone give you a, a gentle squeeze or maybe even a little bit tighter one. Think about what you prefer. My mom explained to me that all sensations and feelings are like waves in the ocean. Some come crashing in while others roll in gently, but they always come and go. We can't stop waves from coming, but we can pay attention to them so they don't knock us over. I'm going to skip through a few more of these pages. Hopefully I'll get to read these in person to students at some point. Um, sometimes I get overwhelmed and I need help from a grown-up. On the first day of school, I woke up super early because I couldn't stop thinking about what my new class would be like. My stomach felt like it was tied in knots and I didn't eat breakfast. In class, it was hard for me to focus on what my new teacher, Miss Morgan, was saying. and My body was shaky. When it was time to line up, I accidentally bumped my desk and knocked all my stuff over. Everything felt like it was going wrong. Miss Morgan helped me pick up my things and I took deep breaths like she reminded me to. I told her about my morning and she explained that our brains have a hard time thinking when our bodies are tired and hungry. She thought I'd feel better if I had a snack and rested in a quiet place while the class was at recess. And she was right. When I came back to the class, I was calm and able to focus so the rest of my day went much better. It's okay to get help when we need it. Try to think of an adult or two that can help you right now. Think of adults that are at school. Think of adults that are at home that can help you. At other times when I'm upset, I can figure out what I need to by listening to my body. I pay attention to my breathing, my heartbeat, the temperature of my skin, or any other sensation. I might ask myself if I'm hungry or thirsty. Is my belly tense or tight? Am I tired or full of energy? I can also try to name my feelings. Do I feel peaceful or playful? Confused or frustrated? Maybe hurt or cranky? There's a lot of different ways I might be feeling, and they're all okay. Here's the last page. Listening to my body and naming what I feel takes practice, but it helps me to figure out what I need. Do I need to have a snack, a drink, some water to help, or to help me rest? Do I need to take some deep breaths or sing my favorite song? Maybe sit in a quiet place alone or go outside and jump around. I can color, draw, dance, cuddle with my dog, hang with someone I love. These are things that I love to do, and they can help me feel calm, happy, and peaceful. Everyone's different, and you get to decide what feels best for you. The more I practice listening to my body, the better I get at responding with care and kindness for myself. 
I can get better at listening to my body, and so can you. So I think that's really important to, um, as we're away from school to pay attention to those sensations that we've got in our bodies. Um, usually if we pay attention to those, they have a direct correlation with how we feel in our brains and in our minds. And if we can regulate our bodies, I think um, that can really regulate how we feel and help us get through our day. So this video is already very too long. Sorry for, for rambling, but I hope um, that it was helpful. And um, yeah, stay tuned. I'll, I'll continue to try to post more as we go. Um, and if you have thoughts or suggestions of what else you'd like me to, to maybe create some, some content for, um, please just email me. I've got my email um, listed on, our, on, our, on this website here. So thanks for your time. Uh, enjoy the rest of your day. Take care.